So, when you used to think of the planet going around the sun, it's not like that. It's like a wave, a shadowy probability wave where the electron is there somewhere, is, is somewhere and has a probability of, a, a higher probability of somewhere. Just like, what's your name again? Anora. Anora said to me about the um, density of the waves. It was more dense in the middle on the double slit. And that, you could do that as a probability wave function. So it turns a probability into a little part of the matter. And the only way that can happen, we think, is through consciousness. So if the, the pattern at the other side of the split, does that become matter? Uh, no. no. Good point. No. It all collapses to one point. It's like, oh, we know now. I, I think I only told you that, but one way I got to grips with superposition is you know, you wake up and you think, should I get a cold? I want to buy some eggs, should I get a cold? Woolworths or IGA? Mm -hmm. And as soon as you decide to go to Woodside, oh, Wood. mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 as soon as you go to Woodside, you realise you're in the wrong place. <laughs> no, as soon as you go to Woolworths, the other two don't exist and right. never did. Sorry. They were a part of a probability wave. That's a great question you've ever asked it. The, it collapses. The wave function's gone. And the big questions in science is what is collapsing the wave function? Mm -hmm. Consciousness. So that didn't. Uh, well, okay, who said that? Yeah, yeah but I tell you what, <laughs> Dean, Dean Radin agrees with you. This guy said, he, I love Dean This guy said, I'm sick of you all talking about it. I'm going to scientifically prove it's consciousness. That Proving anything psychological is exceptionally difficult. And I'll get onto that now. So, what's happening if it walks like consciousness and it sounds like consciousness? It's consciousness. I will. Uh, you would call me quite a practical person. I'm not a spiritualist or mystical or anything like that. My answer is that it is consciousness. And most of the scientific community will say we don't know. I think there's enough, as does Dean Bradley. He's saying, what more do you want me to do? And I'll tell you what he's done. Um, remember I said about Einstein asked if there's a baby watching through the camera, does it collapse the wave function? And then if it's an adult, and what's the difference? It's just that consciousness. Yeah, and why is, well, I can't, no one can answer this, but why is nature, do we all understand how nature, by the very fact of collapsing the wave function, as soon as we look, mm. that's when I, what I mean when I say uh, nature's preventing us from understanding more about no. where this electron is and where it's going. It's not a holographic universe, is it? Not oh, I love it. No, it's, it, no, it's not. I love the holographic universe. I know a lot about the holographic universe. Yeah. That was Stephen Hawking's yeah. big thing about can anything come out of a black hole and it can. It's called Hawking radiation, mm -hmm. you probably know. Yeah. And there's, oh, uh, do you look into the holographic universe at all? Yeah. That's like yeah, uh, that's like the next step on it's wonderful. Did you have a question Yeah, I'm just um so you're talking about the differences between a baby and an adult. Yeah, yeah. Has it ever been um observed if it's just a, a camera taking a photograph without anyone actually looking at yes. it? Yes. Yes it has. So it's been done with cats, dogs. So it's not conscious then. Gerbils. No, I mean like if a camera takes a photograph, there's no No no, it, it does. the camera takes the photograph oh, and yeah. it doesn't collapse. It doesn't matter. Well, no, it remains. Um, there has to be someone looking through the camera. Yes. So what, what, what yeah. does it do? Yeah. Yeah. What does it? What does the photo look like when the wave didn't collapse? Uh, well, uh, that's a good question. I, I mean, I haven't actually done this a lot, so I don't really know. Because you think that would show it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Look, when it no, look when it's collapsed, you you can then track. Oh yeah, what am I saying? Of course I know. 
I sound, I sound, do you know something? I sound like the most arrogant person you'll ever be. And do you know something? I'm the most humble person you'll ever be. I just don't mind saying it. No, I do, of course. When you're looking at it, you, 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 you then see the photon travel. You can track the photon. If it doesn't collapse, you, you can't see it. But anyway, let's move on, because otherwise we'll never get anywhere. Um, I did get a photo of it, yeah. Good looking, Andy Moore, good looking. <laughs> the guy's a legend. In 2012, and I followed this from the beginning, it's all. I've got a video link to this, and I, I, if you're interested in this sort of thing, you should look at that at YouTube. It's wonderful. And I have a Facebook group called Quequa. My cards are here. Um, that's not Q-U-E-Q-E, -E, is it? It's actually, no, Q-U-E. Oh, look at that. It's Q-U-E-C-W-A. The Quantum Education Center of WA. Uh, I'm hoping to... Re build up the quantum knowledge. Quantum biology is a huge thing, am I there? Quantum medicine, huge. Quantum international banking, because of Shaw's algorithm, I mentioned for huge. Quantum mm. biology, um, migration, all of that. So I want to build up a center where we all learn. So this is just the beginning. Okay, in 2012, this guy said, I'm gonna, he's probably sorry he did. He said, I'm going to prove to the scientific world and they make you jump through hoops as they should. Now, I am a, a scientist, a scientific researcher, more than a scientist, but I'm telling you now, um, some people have a go at science and they sort of say, oh, they run it down. That's the loudest sound I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> That they make you, you're not going to get peer reviewed by your peers unless there is no stone unturned. Um, I'll tell you something in a minute as well. Okay, so he said, okay, I'm going to prove consciousness. First thing I'm going to do is get a bunch of Nepalese and Tibetan meditators, pay them more money than they've ever been paid before in their life and compare them with a sham experiment. So one where you, you, no one looks or does anything. And ordinary people. I could put the results up here. It's got 80 gigabytes of information on this. But that, the results aren't the important thing, as I'm sure you'll agree. The meditators, how do you think they did? Very well. Very well. Yeah. yeah. Twice as ridiculously more than the other two categories, which were both nigh on chance. So they were put, just so that you know how it worked, they were put in the room. Remember, it's all down to which way, which slit did it go through. So um, they were put in the room, there was a light, and they said, Relax, the light went red. And they had to imagine they going through a slit, mm -hmm. consciously. It, the, I'm really, really pleased to say that the difference was palpable from the tangible from the beginning. And then little clever Dean, he said, "Okay, let's go in different rooms because I don't know if you know about internet." The equipment he used was an interferometer. An interferometer, have anybody heard of light or gravitational waves? Yeah, it, it's measured in a thing called LIGO, the laser interferometry gravitational um, observation in America. And they can measure two black holes colliding, you probably heard that on the news about a year ago. Two black holes which collided you know, 13 billion years ago are still where it's going through matter. It's unbelievable. But the point I'm making is that an interferometer is very, very accurate, and he used the same sort of thing. What do you think happened when they went in different rooms? I, I don't mean meditators in wrong, one room and humans in another. I mean they were just in a different room in the same building. So? Made, thank you. Made no difference. 
But guess what happened when it went into a different country? Oh. <laughs> and it hurts as well. I was trying to bet you. Have you read this? She's a master, she knows. It made no difference. So, this was done in America. So, let, let me just tell you what's happening here. They were in South Africa, the um, richest Nepalese meditators have ever lived. <laughs> they weren't paid for that. Like they were in South Africa. This very closed interferometer of light going through um, a double slit was in America. And the, the effect of collapsing the wave function how could that happen for 20,000 kilometers away? No, but yeah, well, you can, we have because we've gone into space, yeah. Is that what you come back to what you were talking about before with the particles? The and, and entanglement, um, yeah, it, it, it's more than entanglement though. Entanglement is where you get the one point, and by the way, Entanglement occurs naturally and could possibly occur everywhere. Entanglement is where you entangle two subatomic particles. This is collapsing the wave function, which is only slightly different. That is where you're turning probability into a thing, mm. a photon. So these meditators would do, by the way, <laughs> I've written a novel, I've written four novels. My first novel was on dark matter, mm. an Indian scientist. Um, and I've written um, one on um, uh, collapsing the wave function and on Shaw's algorithm, where uh, a group of lefties from Estonia, Estonia invited Skype, by the way, used Shaw's algorithm to bugger up the whole world. And by the way, the FBI, the CIA, all of these, the, and this is no joke, all the governments in the world, the CIA, the FBI, are well aware of Shaw's. And if, it, if the mafia get it before anyone else, watch out. You will go to your bank and you will see a nil balance and you'll put a thousand dollars in and you'll still see a nil balance. So I've written a novel on that, I just thought about that. Yes. Uh, oh, well, listen to this. Over the internet. Now, well, it, it, it was obviously in a different country, they had to have a way of doing it. So they did it over the internet, and then Ryder Monson happy. He said, hold on a minute. What we'll do is write a Linux simulation program. And we'll have that running some of the time. You, do we all know what Linux is? It's not Microsoft. It's, yeah, it's, oh, it's just a programming language. So it's sim So what's happening is obviously this, these meditators are in front of the thing, uh, thinking, you know, I'll go left, I'll go right, whatever. And then it goes over the internet. Well, a software programmer developed an exact simulation of that. So you could not tell the difference between the data. What do you think happened? <laughs> what do you think happened when it was a software program? Created by human beings. The software created by human beings. Yeah. Right. It had no conscious intent. It had no conscious. It did not collapse the wave function. Yeah. When there was a human being in front of the screen thinking and making a decision, it claps. So How can that be? So, yeah. it's going into artificial intelligence. Oh, well, yeah. Well, in a way, yes. By the way, it's consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, next time you're at a, you know, a groovy party and someone says AI, tell them, oh, you mean pure AI? There's no artificial intelligence without quantum now. Mm. It's called QAI, and, and, and remember the exponential thing I was telling you before, the 3.6 million? A quantum computer that eats that for breakfast. Mm. The quantum computer that just, quantum supremacy occurred in November of last year, 
and it used nine quadrillion imaginary numbers. And then it replicated them. That's unbelievable. It was myth. I remember 